Hi everyone. Um, normally I don't like to uh, do a vlog unless I have something that I really feel passionately about. But um, this vlog is for Richard. Richard is my friend from work and he's a really sweet guy. He, he really is a great guy. And he told me that he wanted me to make a vlog and he wanted one tonight. So I'm doing this for you, Richard. Um, this vlog's for you. You know, Richard doesn't like people to know this, but uh, he is a hemophiliac. So, you know, I feel pretty bad for him. He, he misses a lot of work because of it. Um, you know, we can't have uh, real box cutters at work. We have to have box cutters where the razor blades are made out of rubber. Um, and also we have to have safety scissors, which makes it really hard to open a box it takes like two or three hours but you know we can't we can't discriminate against Richard we have to you know make the adjustments for him and we don't complain about it we're, we're fine with that and one day at work Richard got a paper cut and <clears throat> we had a call the, uh, the ambulance and I just God, I felt so bad for him. So, you know what, Richard? Like I said, this vlog's for you, and I'm happy to do it. Okay, um, moving on. Uh, like I said, it's really hard for me to do a blog, or a vlog, <laughs> unless there's something that I'm really feeling passionately about. And so I'm actually kind of cheating here. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a vlog that I've already done, except I did it in Spanish for my friends in Spain. So, you know, my English speaking viewers don't feel cheated I'm, I'm doing an original vlog it's just one that I've already done like a few days ago but it's it, it I can promise you it won't be exactly the same um, I'll probably add to take a little out you know to adjust to the the audience um, so yeah here it goes um, the blog is the vlog is actually going to be about the similarities between uh, Barack Obama and Spain's current Prime Minister, Jose Luis Rodriguez Zapatero. Um, you know, they were both elected in their late 40s. Um, they both have two daughters. Um, they both ran on similar platforms when they were initially elected. And they both came into power after eight years of right-wing conservative rule. Uh, you know, Barack Obama's coming in after George W. Bush. Jose Luis Rodriguez Zapatero came in after Jose Maria Aznar, um, who belongs to the, the center-right party in Spain called the, the Popular Party, or the Partido Popular. Uh, Jose Luis Rodriguez Zapatero is one of my favorite politicians. He, he, he really is. I really like him a lot. He belongs to the, uh, the left-wing party in Spain that is the uh, PSOE, uh, Partido Socialista de los Obreros de España, which means roughly translated the Socialist Worker Party of Spain. Yes, yes, it is a party that has socialist in the title. I know that's very scary for a lot of Americans, the word socialist, uh, but it's not just a scary word in in, in Europe for some reason, probably because they're a bunch of pinko commies, but hey, what are you going to do? <laughs> anyway, um, I mentioned that their platforms were similar. Um, the, the, the platforms of Obama and Zapatero were very similar in that uh, Zapatero ran on a platform of pulling Spanish troops out of Iraq. Because if you'll remember, Jose Maria Aznar, his predecessor in Spain, uh, in the presidency there, was a member of the Coalition of the Willing, which was Bush, Blair, and Aznar, and then the Prime Minister of Poland, like anybody even remembers his name. Um, so yeah, it was those four guys, they met in the Azores in Portugal. Oh, as well as a Portuguese prime minister. I don't remember his name either. Probably because it's not important. I mean, Portugal. Ew. Uh, anyway, so they all met in the Azores and were like, hey, let's go to war. 
in Iraq. Yeah. And that was about it. So they all went to war and it sucked. As you all know. So anyway, uh, yeah, so Zapatero came into power. He pulled the troops out of Iraq. He also ran on a platform of uh, giving the illegal immigrants in Spain a path to citizenship, which Barack Obama also supports. So Zapatero did that. And actually the interesting thing was, after he did that, he legalized, I don't know how many thousands of uh, legal immigrants in Spain. And it was interesting because the the tax revenues in Spain went up proportionately, uh, substantially in Spain after that, because there were so many new workers filling the uh, the coffers of the, you know the government, the, the state, the government taxes, who previously had been working illegally, and the government wasn't getting any of any taxes from them. So now all of a sudden, there's this big influx of money, and it was good for everybody. I mean, good for the immigrants and good for the government. Uh, the third thing that Zapatero ran on, which is what well, I thought was really impressive, especially in Spain, seeing as Spain is a country that just 30 years ago was still being, a little over 30 years ago, was still being, was still under a fascist uh, dictatorship. Um, so, I mean, what Zapatero did uh, 30 years later, is he ran on a platform of legalizing gay marriage, and he did it in Spain, which, I mean, I think he is just an amazing uh, politician. I mean, before he enacted uh, gay marriage in Spain, the majority of the people were against it. Uh, but then once he enacted it, like a year later, they did another poll, and the majority of the people were in favor of it, because they, you know, they saw, you know, gay men and women getting married, and they were like, well, I guess it's not that big of a so, I mean, I don't know, I, I just think he's a really cool politician. I like him a lot. Um, which leads me to another story. While I was there in Spain that, that first year when, when Zapatero was elected in 2003 and 2004, he was actually elected in 2004 because they have their elections in early spring in Spain, the presidential elections in early spring. Um, if you all will recall in 2004, just before the uh, presidential elections in Spain, uh, Spain basically went through their version of 9-11, uh, what we had here in the United States. Uh, there was a, several train bombs that went off um, in several different uh, locations in Spain, um, and a little over 200 people died. It was the, it was the largest terrorist attack in, in Spain's history, just as 9-11 was uh, you know, the largest terrorist attack in the history of the United States. Uh, and, and, and what happened was uh, there is a journalist, uh, an, an edit, editorial columnist for the, United, for the New York Times, Thomas Friedman, who writes a column every week. And the week after Zapatero was elected, just a few days after, he wrote a, a column, an op-ed column, saying that uh, Al-Qaeda had won the Spanish elections uh, because they had voted for someone who was going to pull the troops out of Iraq just after, you know, this, these Madrid train bombings. And he, he, he basically said it was, you know, Spain was, Spanish people were appeasing terrorists by electing Zapatero, which I found really offensive, actually. I found it very, very offensive um, being there in Spain for the bombings and the, the, the night after the bombings, or two nights after the bombings, I saw one of the most amazing things that I have ever seen in uh, almost anywhere. And it was after two nights after the bombings, the Spanish people went out into the streets and did peaceful demonstrations all over the country uh, to say no to terrorism. And it was just, it was amazing, a, a peaceful demonstration against terrorism. It was, that reaction to me was just so, so dignified.